Okay, so while we're still here on the construction framework, let's go ahead and A, formulate an appropriate boundary condition to replace uh, partial of f of z at uh, 0 to the left is equal to partial f of z evaluated at 0 to the right for the case of two strings under tension t joined by a knot of mass m. B, find the amplitude and phase of the reflected and transmitted wave for the case where the knot has mass m and the second string is massless. Let's kind of doodle it out. So if we have a string under some tension, what we see is that the tension pulling down um, on a string from some wave front at position z forms some angle theta, and we have z plus delta z has a new uh, angle incident of theta prime, but with the same tension. So this, or this wave equation stuff originally came from uh, standing wave experiments and understanding simple uh, Newtonian force diagrams, but these things can quickly get um, very messy very fast. And uh, so we're gonna take this one step at a time. Here, what we need to know is that for waveforms, for a knot at z equals zero, just for simplicity, we see that the incident wave, uh, f1 tilde, z of t is equal to a1, e to the i, k1, z minus omega t, for uh, everything to the left of z equals zero. Similarly, the reflected wave has to be less than z equals zero as well, but we have a new coefficient there for ar and then transmit it, what's gonna to pass to the other side of the knot is again a new string constant kt, or excuse me, k2, but this happens to the right of the boundary, which is at z equals zero. And what we need to realize here is that the incident amplitude plus the reflected amplitude has to equal the transmitted amplitude, which makes sense. Energy and all that has to be conserved. All right, so let's go ahead and dive on in. Part A is a direct result of the Newtonian force diagrams. So with the fact that we have tension in the strings with a knot with a knot with mass, let's consider the sum of forces, uh, which we see here. Uh, so the change in force is equal to T sine theta plus minus T sine theta minus equals MA. And so what this is saying is that we need to consider the tension at the boundary to the left and the right and then of course, since we have mass equal acceleration, we know we need the time derivative at the boundary as well. Um, so not too crazy, uh, a little more detail in the book, of course, but we'll see this again with damp strings and other things like that, damped harmonic oscillations. Classical mechanics deals with these a lot, so we're not spend too much time on it. But for B, this is where the uh, hefty work has to come in. All right, so we know what the amplitude should add up to. Incident reflected equals transmitted. Now let's apply the boundary conditions to what we determine in part A. So to the right of the boundary, we need the transmission. And to the left of the boundary, we need the incident plus the reflection, which is, as we see here in the first bracket, F of T. In the second bracket, you have I and R. And then, of course, since we're looking at what happens at the boundary, the time derivative of ft is what is needed since we're looking straight to the right of it, um, since uh, massless and all that other stuff. All right, so let's just take these derivatives and uh, chug them through. Again, with z equals zero, they simplify kind of easy after the fact. Um, you see that the first derivative is on the left hand side then evaluate it we need to take two derivatives for the right hand side so we do that after we do that we see that we get a equation in the i guess third line here t times big parentheses i k 2 a t e t i omega t minus i k 1 bracket a i minus a r e t i omega t is equal to m times i squared omega squared a t e to the i uh k2 times 0 minus omega t. Again, uh, the thing to note here is that after you simplify this down, both uh, left-hand side and right-hand side have a factor of e to the i omega t, and they cancel. Wonderful. That's ex exactly what we expect with the exponentials. Uh, furthermore, um, 
if we divide over the i t from the left hand side to the right hand side and multiply to get rid of that i in the denominator or rationalize it um what we see here is a quick easy consolidation of what uh to get k1 and all the uh transmission coefficients to the left and the or excuse me everything that happens to the left of the knot on the left hand side and everything to the right of the knot on the right hand side hence we simplify down to k1 a1 minus ar is equal to k2 minus i m omega squared over t a t okay phew uh again messy this whole chapter is messy with these computations so we're going to try to take it a step at a time but no promises it just just gets messy so let's multiply the amplitude equation by k1 and add them again the amplitude equation comes from ai plus ar equal at so if we multiply that by k1 and add the two we see that the k1 ar terms cancel on the left hand side and we just add them across on the right hand side uh once we do that um we can simplify the left hand side to just find what uh to find 2k1 ai is equal to this bracket terms times at so if we want to solve this thing for at we just divide over that bracket term and we see that this simplifies down now notice how last time we had a 2v uh, over v1 plus v2 similarly here we have a of t is equal to 2k1 k1 plus k2 minus some other term that other term was not found in our original uh setup and so things like this are where we have um to take into account the physical system so let's eliminate a t uh so now that we have an equation for a of t and a of i now let's do the same thing to eliminate a of t and uh simplify this down for the a r term so let's eliminate ar let's eliminate at with the amp amplitude equation and uh do to do okay yep so we substitute that into the amplitude equation for at and we can factor a an ai to the left and once we find a common denominator we see we get cap or k1 minus k2 plus that i m omega squared over t and then in the denominator we have to switch the plus or minus signs on a k2 and the i m omega squared term again <laughs> these setups are going to be seen over and over again so be aware of these ratios so um if the string if the second string is massless then v2 is equal to t over mu2 is equal to infinity um and that's because um again being massless you don't have anything disturbing or slowing down the speed so it goes to infinity then we see that the ratio k2 over k1 is equal to v1 over v2 and thus we have the ratio k1 k2 over k1 goes to zero since v2 goes to infinity and that uh runs away quite fast um so let's simplify with that we take the at uh equation and we divide that everything by k1 from the numerator and we simplify down that denominator solely so we can have uh, 1 plus the ratio k2 to k1. And we see that that thing cancels to 0, which is perfect. So if we let beta equal m omega squared over k1t, just for simplification's sake, omega here is k1v2. Go ahead and simplify that through as much as possible. And we see here that beta eventually simplifies down to m k1 over mu1. Thus, after that, after that specific uh, substitution, we get a t is equal to parentheses 2 over 1 minus i beta a i. And then a r is equal to 1 plus i beta over 1 minus i beta a i. So again, the substitution comes in left for both terms. But again, in order to solve for a t and a r, we have to set them uh, equal to some coefficient times AI. So everything is in reference to that initial uh, amplitude. Um, and so the term in the parentheses are complex amplitudes that need to be modeled with uh, A, E to the I, phi. So then uh, we do the complex conjugate method again. 
and we see that we have um, the two terms canceling, the two exponential terms canceling. And then if we take the complex conjugate of the ratio terms, we see we have a 1 plus i beta canceling with the 1 plus i beta in the next term, and a 1 minus i beta canceling with a 1 minus i beta. So that goes to 1. So that tells us that a equals 1. If that's the case, now we can go back to the complex form and say, well, then 1 times e to the i phi is equal to um, 1 plus i beta divided by 1 minus i beta. So we'll go ahead and rationalize that denominator to make it all real. And we see that we have 1 plus 2 i beta minus beta squared over 1 plus beta squared. Why do we do this? Well, we want to solve for the angle, right? Uh, the phase angle phi. And remember that tangent of phi is equal to sine phi, cosine phi. And we know that the complex sine and cosines are equal to e to the i phi minus e to the negative i phi over 2i, e to the i phi plus e to the negative i phi over 2, and we'll simplify that down. This is what I was mentioning a couple questions ago. I believe it was either question 2 or 3 um, and how to solve that. But nonetheless, if we plug everything in for the e to the i phi and we simplify everything through left and right, up and down, we see that we get a lot of cancellations and tangent of phi is equal to 2 beta over 1 minus beta squared. All right, whew, got a lot there. Thus, we see that AR is equal to parentheses 1 plus I beta over 1 minus I beta. AI is modified to AR e to the I phi, uh, where phi, uh, delta R is the ref uh, phase reflection. Plug it all in. We see we get uh, 1 e to the i phi, I, ai e to the i phi 1, and we just add them two together, and so on and so forth. So ar, is equal, AR e to the i uh, delta r is equal to ai e to the i delta i plus phi, which again is often neglected, but the tilde notation makes us work with this. From which we conclude that if that's the case, uh, we have AR equal AI, and delta R is equal to delta I plus 10 inverse 2 beta over 1 minus beta squared. That is quite a bit to work with, and we'll definitely see another question just like this with a damping term. Um, but let's uh, continue on with the transmission side of things now. If we do a similar arrangement for... The transmission coefficient, what we see is that a is equal to 2 over the square root of 1 plus beta squared instead of equal to 1. And if we plug in for e to the i phi and solve for that, what we see here is that we have 2 times 1 plus i beta and then divided by a uh, times 1 plus beta squared. Again, using the definition of the tangent, complex tangent, plug it all in, let things cancel through. And we see after more simplifications that we get cancellations of just about everything. So tangent phi is equal to beta. And if we modify the tilde notations to the real notations, uh, we see here that a of t is equal to 2 over the square root of 1 plus beta squared ai. And the reflected phase is equal to delta i plus tan inverse of beta. Whew! Messy, messy. Like I said, this whole chapter is like this, so let's just get ready for the long haul.